use of corticosteroids in assisted conception and the risks that it poses. Now, there are some reports that the use of corticosteroids in IVF may improve the chance of pregnancy. This is based on small studies and we still are not entirely certain about how effective that may be. So why do we give steroids? So look at this. The belief is that natural killer cells have an increase in certain group of patients who have uh, either uh, miscarriages or repeated implantation failure. And in those cases, giving steroids seems to work. Now, if, let's look at it this way, that you require activation of the immune setup to be able to continue pregnancy. Without that activation of the immune setup, pregnancy cannot continue. So suppressing it, some researchers believe, is quite harmful and may affect fetal growth. So here this is, uh, it was quite a nice design with a large number of cases and they had 618 live births were included in women who had been treated with steroids and compared to a general population. So uh, there were a total number of 12,426 births out of which of the non-exposed uh, group out of which 618 had steroids and uh, they had steroids which was given as uh, prednisolone oral from 5 milligram to 25 milligram a day starting from day 7 of stimulation and then continued till 12 weeks if the pregnancy test was positive. Uh, now what they did notice is that two concerned abnormalities were on the right and that is uh, one is of undescended testis uh, which is cryptorchidism and that is where the testis is undescended and hypospadias and these were the two uh, you know challenges which uh, or complications that that were seen now what we know is that the first phase of uh, descent of a testis uh, and the descent starts from the gomenaculum uh, and the regression uh, downward into the inguinal canal does require a certain amount of corticosteroids and, uh, and testosterone without that that does not take place. So if you switch off this testosterone that tends to occur, this descent may be uh, disturbed. Now, there is also a possibility that corticosteroids may lead to reduced leading cell production of testosterone fetal uh, testis. And this in fact may slow down the process of also de uh, descent that tends to occur. Now, there is a very small increase that happens in the group of those who are taking corticosteroids of hypospadias and an undescended uh, 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 testis. Now, if you look at the oldest study, and the oldest studies, this suggests that there was a higher incidence of uh, talipus as well as cleft lip and cleft palate of, of women who had been on steroids for a long time. So if you look at a study, you'll say, well, what, what are the deficiencies? It's a retrospective uh, study. Uh, and again, they looked at only uh, the male offspring in this case. Remember, uh, the, in this study, at least for fresh cycle, those women who were on steroids had a higher proportion of male offspring, or, but not in a frozen cycle. And uh, so there are deficiencies. But again, this should highlight the case that probably there are risks associated with long term steroids and its use needs to be questioned. And probably with most studies, you'll be able to get a better idea.